No, that's not good. <laughs> All right, so the next one that we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate frequency, and we're gonna do that by, if we look at our equation, we can multiply frequency by each side, making it by itself. So then we'll have speed of light over wavelength is equal to our frequency. So we have our speed of light, which is going to be 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 5.872 times 10 to the negative second. So we're going to go ahead and divide those two. 2.998 divided by 5.8. 762 is equal to 0 0.5101234 we have 1 2 3 4 5 so 19 times 10 to the 10th making this number bigger so this has to get smaller so it should be 5. Point one zero one nine times ten to the tenth. So the energy, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and take our h, which is six point six two six times ten to the negative thirty fourth, times it by our frequency, which is five point one zero one nine times ten to the tenth. Take those two numbers, multiply them out, 6.626 times 5.1019 equals 33.805, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the 14th, oh, 24th, negative. We're going to make this number smaller, so this number gets bigger, so we're going to make it 3.3805 times 10 to the negative 23. Okay, that's all the energy. Now we're going to look at um, the following questions. Okay, so which of the following electrons would be considered to be at ground state and why? Okay, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, and then we have 1s2, 2s1, 2p4. The one that's going to be at ground state is going to be A, because it has the correct electron configuration. Okay, this one right here is going to be an excited state, because you can see that there should be two electrons in the S block, but one got excited and bumped up. Which of the following electrons would be considered to be excited state and why? Okay, so we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, and 1s2, 2s1, 2p2. So this electron right here got excited and jumped up a whole orbital to the p orbital. So b is going to be excited. And you can see that in the electron configuration. Okay, so you see how that one right here, that should be two, one got excited and moved up an orbital. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just got excited. Yeah, and you can see it in the electron configuration. Next one is describe the Hund's rule and the Pauli excursion principle, and I actually have a great slide for this. So the Hund's rule and the Pauli excursion principle are right here. Okay, so Pauli excursion principle, right there. Okay, oh, that actually states that no two electrons, oh my gosh, no two electrons um, can be in this, have the same set of quantum numbers. And the quantum numbers are kind of like a telephone number. Okay, so like the electrons in this orbital right here, they actually have four quantum numbers. And those four numbers will never be the same for each electron. That's all the Pauli excursion principle is saying, is the quantum numbers will never be the same. And the Hund's rule we talked about, the Hund's rule says that orbitals of equal energy can be occupied by one electron orbital before each is occupied by its second. So that's the rule 
we were talking about the p orbitals and each one has to get one electron before it gets its pair so the Hund's rule is each orbital gets one electron before it gets its pair. Okay, so that's the Hund's rule and the Pauli excursion principle. So hopefully that helped you. Hund's rule, Pauli excursion principle, no four quantum numbers are the same. Each electron has to have a pair before it gets its other one. Okay, describe the wave particle of light theory and how does how was it discovered? And make sure you list the scientists who were involved in this contribution. And that is all in the theory. Guys, I'm doing a video. Shh. Gosh, Aaron Alexis, I hate those kids. <laughs> The theory of light is all in that article on the website. Okay, the main person that was doing it was who? Anybody know? That's here? No? No. Oh, well, we better read the article. Yeah. Um, last one. Explain how the speed of light equation and the energy equation relate to the um, electromagnetic spectrum and photons. So we have the wave equation, which is going to be C over F. And then the energy equation is going to be equal to um, H to F. Okay, This is going to be the wavelength. And each of these waves give off a certain amount of energy. That's how they're related. And the frequencies, obviously, have to deal with the amount of energy and the wavelength that it's going to have. The wavelength and fre frequency are um, inversely related. So if it has a short wavelength, it's a long frequency and vice versa. Um, make sure you know that these two equations, you know that the speed of light constant is um, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the um, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. Did you skip that? No? Is this with this one? Oh, maybe. Yes. Oh. Gabby, you reminded me. Is there one that I missed? I My pages are crazy right five. now. Number five, yeah. Explain how electrons produce light from the ground. I said it was a city. What? My page is so crazy. Whoa. Okay. Oh, look, there's my image. It reappeared. <laughs> oh, right here. Yep. Okay, so it's like, explain how electrons produce light from the ground state to excited. Okay, so if we have an electron and it's at ground state, say it's here, and when it gets excited, it bumps up to another energy level. It's hanging out there. Once it starts to fall, that's the light we see. And actually on the website, let me go there quick because it's awesome. There's actually a great picture of it. And that creates a photon. So it's right here on the website. So it bumps up. The energy that it takes to bump up is the photon. So it bumps up. You see the light comes back down. Bumps back up. Falls back down. Just like that. Also, if you need the theory of light, it's right here. I'm going to let you do a little bit of studying by yourself. If you click that, open it, should pop right up, right there. Sir Isaac Newton talked about the theory of light. So there's that part.